much more grounded in reality uh, and definitely does not contain several references to uh, to South Park or to Johnny Depp's several characters that exist in and around the multiverse. I'm waiting to see the Power Rangers. Oh, the other one. <laughs> oh man! Oh, mm, mm. I'm 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 holding my tongue on that one. How many campaigns can uh, I put them in before people are like, Caleb? Why aren't, why aren't you just running Power Rangers games? <laughs> Seriously, it, oh, Caleb, why aren't you just running bloody Power Rangers games all the nights? If it's uh, to be the Blue Ranger, I call typecasting. <laughs> It's. It, it, I was gonna say, wait, is it because you? <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, it, <clears throat> wait, we would have two competing spots for that. If Real I have to play the, if I have to play the Black Ranger, mm, there's gonna be some words. <laughs> Fine, be 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 difficult. I'll be the Pink Ranger. Jesus, all of you. <laughs> it's. it's but then I get confused because was, wasn't there Sunday. one guy who was like. Green and white, and did he also become Tommy? Well, he started out green and then turned to white, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yes. That but, is when they uh, ran out of uh, Sentai footage featuring the original costumes and moved the costumes and uh, the American footage under one roof. So they had to find the white costume, which was from a different. Super sentice. I'm gonna shut up. We got Dungeons <laughs> and Dragons to play. Oh, uh, this I can talk about some this research. Later. At least it's not Pokemon, so I'm happy. <laughs> oh, uh, hold on. I've uh, actually just recently started a Pokemon Y Nuzlocke, and if you are interested in giving us the recap from our previous session, I know that it's been a couple weeks. Uh, you can earn yourself a DM inspiration, which might be very useful in tonight's session. If you're interested, give us a roll into chat. Oh, uh, Power Ranger crossover. Where do you think this Elven Tomb is taking you? <laughs> uh, I don't think I can do the recap justice. I don't know why nobody else is rolling. Oh, I'm I'm all full up on inspiration. <laughs> I don't remember what the uh, fuck you... happened. <laughs> Same. All right, I guess uh, I will I take mean, it. I, I, I guess I'll do you... it. It's not going to be that great, but I'll do it. No one else is going to do it. Oh, all right, you you have stolen it out from underneath the uh, the evil person. I was going to give the inspiration to a Kia 13. You're up. All right. So um, last time we had defeated the dragon and we were starting to go through tin towns, trying to figure out um, what all was destroyed. Um, we sort of cut that short and started looking at what people were doing during their downtime. I don't remember what people were doing during their downtime, so I can't give a very good recap of that. I do remember, though, um, that we went fishing. <laughs> and we definitely confronted a Loch Ness monster um, from the Palo Palo Paleozeric something era i don't know um <laughs> and um we didn't actually do anything to it we were just like hey stop playing with kuma q and it was like all right fine. no no we, we we did something we we gave it something yeah i also may have accidentally turned into a shark and attacked it yeah uh, then it just it's sort of we, uh, we didn't Lotus... actually Lotus Take. made gave it a, made it go away by giving it, yeah, giving it tree, tree fitty. Tree, tree fitty, fitty. yep. <laughs> Which uh, advantage because South Park apparently. Um, but yeah, so it's probably we we didn't make it promise that it wouldn't attack any bo more boats or anything like that. We just had it go away temporarily. Um, so you know, fishing on. Mir Dwalden is uh, still still just as dangerous as it was before we went out there. Um, let's see. Um, I believe Avalus and Alicia have not done their downtime events yet. Nope, I did. Okay. Okay, everyone but Avalus did? No, Lotus hasn't. 
I think we like, all uh, did our. It was just Aval stuff. Oh, Avalis wanted to go to the mirror. Was that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, so the, is the, everyone? The tomb basically, is my downtime. Okay, so everyone did game and go. I don't remember if Gaiman went. Yeah, Gaiman went because Gaiman, uh, Gaiman did some investigating. That's right. Gaiman did some investigating uh, because Gaiman was interested in dealing with the hag that has been harassing us. Gaiman went from, uh, well, between the two towns, uh, investigating the uh, Arcane Brotherhood. Um, people apparently knew something of... Uh, the hag no wait that was lotus lotus found some arcane brotherhood people uh gaiman found some uh found a quest found a side quest to get some uh what's it called uh, alchemist fire in exchange for some alchemist fire uh, has accepted another side quest to go retrieve a family heirloom magical lure set fishing tackle um lost near um somewhere near east haven i believe um something like that also found out that the hag uh was making her home i believe in like lot dinishir maybe like in a cave system near near there that's just what's coming to mind right now um Let's see. Lotus did some investigating. Uh, turned out the tiefling that was shown in the mirror was part of the Arcane Brotherhood. Gaiman... Oh yeah, Gaiman found... Found out... Was investigating. Found a person that was uh, like burned at the stake accused of being part of the arc uh part of a cult burned at the stake gaiman suspicious about that um or am i getting gaiman and lotus mixed up uh the no. wizard born burned at the stake was a member of the arcane brotherhood according to information allegedly, allegedly. Right. and gaiman gaiman was suspicious of that um and that's Alicia did some charity work. Um, Lotus investigated that tiefling. Uh, that's all I remember. You have earned DM inspiration. Now, before we move to the Elven Tomb for the second time, we all need to learn more about each other's characters. We don't know enough. So let me ask David more about about game in the glaive can you give us your thane fact for this week uh yes um i found out most uh, rather embarrassing and uh, quite accidentally uh, i am in fact allergic to pineapple uh i have not tried ingesting it um so yeah um it, it one of the uh, pits i was you know um you know, do, doing, you know, uh, bouts at. <clears throat> the promoter thought it would be fun to, like, do, a, like, a fruit bowl. Not, 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 not like a fruit bowl, like a bowl where you put fruit in, but, like, have a fruit-themed, you know, bouts and whatnot. And, uh, I, uh, was crowned the pineapple king after winning and so that they, they made a crown out of sliced pineapple and, and like cut the bottom off the oh, whole thing stuck it on my head and i immediately broke out in hives in front of everybody there i was not happy mm. well uh perhaps gaiman becoming a um uh... A fruit lord, a lord of the fruits. Uh, that'll come up later in the campaign. Well, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That, that, that means something different in different circles there. That, that I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Gaiman, you have earned Faxpiration. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let us uh, continue with Avalus. Avalus, can you tell us a little bit more about Avalus? 
So uh, you all know, of course, that I was raised by um, the Yeti, and that that is my um, first language uh, common coming much later. Um, so the Yeti, of course, have one word for snow because it's snow. Who would have more words for that, right? But uh, they have more than 50 words for different ways to eviscerate a dismember of prey by claw and teeth alone. Just something mm -hmm. to think about. That, that uh, I did not know that. Thank you for telling us more about the Yeti language and uh, which dialect that Avila speaks. Maybe uh, you can use that knowledge when you all find the supposed Red Yeti that lives in the plains of Icewind Dale. It, it's a great language to communicate threats, but, uh, you know, poetry and serenading is uh, a little more difficult. Uh, let us know if uh, it works on uh, romancing clerics. <clears throat> yeah, you never know. <laughs> uh, uh, before we digress any further, let us uh, speak to Lotus about her thing fact for this week. Sure. Uh, I got this sort of uh, inspired by the uh, flashback that uh, Flavie played for her and everyone else during the last session. But before, you know, her father left, the last actually happy memory that Lotus has of her and both of her parents still together was about a week beforehand for her fifth birthday. Uh, both of them, her parents decided to go all out for it, and they not only took her to a Baltimore Orioles baseball game, but they got, like, private skybox, a custom birthday cake with her name on it, uh, you know, and it was all cool. They got... Uh, happy birthday message on scoreboard during seventh inning stretch and even after the game they had a couple of the players come up to skybox and they got some pictures and autographs and that was really the last happy memory that she has of all three of them together does lotus slash marcus ever think about what her her father did for work being well, a psychic projection of a devil prince <laughs> well, the thing is, is like when she was younger, she didn't really think much of it. But being an investigative journalist, uh, there were a few things that, you know, came up probably. It's like, well, maybe he was like a CIA agent that was in deep cover doing like assassinations. Maybe he was uh, or another thing, like he was maybe some sort of like mobster or something like that. But mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, it, it all makes so much more sense now that. Apparently, being a uh, a devil uh, a devil king makes a lot more sense than any of that. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, you have earned backspiration. Let us continue to Alicia. Alicia, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself with your Thane fact this week? Uh, yeah. Uh, Alicia's not a good singer. Uh, a little, a little tough in a religion where they do sing songs to the morning lord, uh, specifically during the summer and uh, during um, like spring and autumn equinoxes. So, uh, yeah, they just hum <laughs> as best <laughs> they can. And I remember uh, those days in church. Me too. Mm. <laughs> it's like, I, I'm not going to sing all the hymns. I'm just going to hum along. It, it, does the morning, does the Church of the Morning Lord skip the third verse? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Who knows? Because <laughs> I want to know why. Tell I think, me uh, why. I think I may have found the place that... Uh, Lotus's father may have worked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oof. They have the golden arches. We have the golden arches. <laughs> yes, this, this is what that franchise looks like in this alternate timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> thank you uh, uh, so much for sharing. Uh, hopefully, uh, Sing offs are going to be a big part of this uh, campaign. Uh, last a musical, an all musical episode. 
<laughs> let's see. We've we, we, we've heard from Lotus. We've heard from Gaiman. We've heard from Alicia. We've heard from Evelis. We've not heard from Akia. We have so many A's in our group. Akia, you're up. All right. Uh, Akia's is uh, got some basic stuff. Uh, Akia looks a little bit different. Uh, Y'all notice that. Akia uh, wanting to uh, change change a little bit to match their advancing um, the way they think about themselves. You'll notice that they no longer have a a, f uh, a flamethrower basically attached to their arm. That That's no longer there. Um, when So when they're using the cantrip create bonfire, uh, they are throwing just little incendiary grenades uh, like they gave to Gaiman. Uh, also, when they cast Longstrider, uh, it looks... They hmm. so the the little shoes that you will gain um, it's little attachments for everybody's shoes that makes your shoes basically have feet. Uh, you can kind of imagine like the old school. Uh, toddler toy, the little duck that you pull on a string, and it's got like the little flappy feet. So it looks like that. So you get like four little flappy feet on your shoes, and they crawl around, um, just like the shoes of this anime character that I based that I posted in uh, Discord. If you've ever Excellent. seen that anime, I have not seen this one, but uh, it, it looks fun. It looks like she's got like a sailor outfit on. Are those shoes or slippers? I want them. Yes. <laughs> and they, they are, uh, those shoes are sentient and they uh, have little feet that they can run around on their own. Oh no. Uh, well, excellent. Well, uh, everyone, I need to pull us to a different world. Now that we're all charged with the power of factspiration, DM inspiration. And we are in a world of cold, of isolation and desolation. The land of Icewind Dale was forever changed after the attack of the Shardland Dragon against the region, against the settlement formerly known as Ten Towns, now colloquially known as Two Towns. The band of Thanes who saved the majority of the population in the two largest cities find themselves at a place they wish to go back to. An elven tomb with a moon dial, a location marked by its access to a magic mirror willing to answer questions to those who know how to ask. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you missed out uh, going from Dugan's Hole to Avalisville. Yeah. Or uh, uh, maybe Avalis Bend. Hmm. <laughs> hmm, something to consider. So uh, you, you all have made the trek to the Elven Tomb. And uh, we might have, should have some companions here with you, because I believe you all wish to bring one Miss Danica Grace Leo with you. Yeah. A moon maiden, a servant of Salune. Is she the number one sort of, uh, you know, cleric, priest, person who worships a dark goddess? Well, not a dark goddess, a goddess that might be moon adjacent that you wish to bring with you? knows maybe there's another one out there in a, a land close to Baldur's gate that you'd want to bring uh but she's not a part of this adventure we'll just leave her uh, in the background quick question uh akia so if you gave the shield of repulsion to avalis does that mean that Gaiman no longer has a shield of repulsion uh that is correct uh 
Alicia got the shield of repulsion. Avalos got the uh, got their bow upgraded to a radiant Excuse radiant bow. Oh, uh, I'll throw those in chat. My new bow, yo. <laughs> I I have a weirdly large amount of vision when I don't have a Kia selected. I don't have vision, even though I'm, I should have sixty with Danica. We can adjust that. Oh, uh, yeah, I it, guess Kuma Q has, like, infinite vision for some reason. Uh, it's got 60 feet of vision. Oh, it has dark yeah. vision. That's why. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. I shall just cast a light on my mask. As we oh. arrive, I'm going to cast uh, Long Strider on... All the PCs. I'm all going right, to... so we're, we're going to make everybody fast. Love it. Um, I don't know what problems we're going to get into, but last time was eventful. And I'm going to use a second level and three first level slots. Y'all, ain't it, ain't it, ain't it uh, just a, uh, an MF? It's jump. For a second, I was like, you can't uh, uh, upcast Longstrider, can you? But you can. It's jump that you can't up uh, upcast. So I'll go through, and I will Longstrider, everyone. I... Oh, oh my. Huh. I, I say oh my because it sounds dirty. Mm. Uh, so you all are now significantly faster as Akia powers you up. Now, standing uh, outside of the Elven Tomb, uh, one thing that you notice, Avalos, because you have not been here before, and maybe I should paint this picture for you, because you haven't been here. Paint away. Here's what you notice. Rising? out of this snowy hillside is a triangular gnomon of beautifully carved crystal that stands 20 feet tall. That's the uh, <laughs> the moon dial. Uh, a 10 foot high berm hugging the circle's eastern edge has evergreens growing around it and atop it, sheltering what looks like a sarcophagus enclosed by a half circle of pale blue crystal pillars. North of the berm is a gazebo. South of the berm is a row of outward-facing statues atop granite pillars of elven warriors. Are these what we're right next to? Mm -hmm. Set them. Okay. Yeah. yeah, these are the elves. Does knowing that these are elves and not a ladrin, does Avalos feel any connection at all, or does, or does I would it just? Feel that would be up to Avalos as he looks in them as their faces have been worn away by the weather, by the wind. They've been eroded, but their ears make them out to be elves by how pointy they are. See, if you look at the shape of the ear, it's suddenly different than mine. So you can see that I'm not a... doesn't matter. Mm. Annika will say, this is quite exciting, everyone, that we're here, finally. It has been a while since you first came here. I'm excited to delve into this magic mirror. And there's a sarcophagus here. Did you all look into the sarcophagus the last time you were here? We did not. Hmm. Um, there seemed to have been something behind how it can be 
opened that we didn't figure out the first time. I see. Any clue to who may or may not be inside? No idea. I don't think any of us could speak Elvish at the time. Uh, that no. would make it a little bit more difficult. Is there any Elvish written anywhere? Because I happen to speak that. Uh, well, uh, as you enter into uh, the area, uh, the first thing that you will notice... Boop! Uh, as Danica just does a, a big old jump onto the berm and over the berm, there is this very interesting object. And uh, Avalis was not here for this, but uh, rising from the center of this circular shape is a tall, triangular crystal gnomon. One typically finds in the middle of a sundial. It is thick near the base and narrows to a sharp point Jesus. at the top. Revealing a circle of symbols carved into the stone around it. The symbols depict phases of the moon. So this is what you see here. As you look about, you do notice that there is the odd um, elvish rune or word carved into the moon dial. Uh, if you wish to kind of look at those, let me know and I'll tell you what you read. Uh, yeah, he'll kind of walk around and start reading. Excellent. Near the inscription of the full moon, you see the phrase, gaze upon your own face and have seven questions answered. This, uh, I assume, relates to the mirror and that uh, you say is here somewhere. Ah, yes, the mirror. Uh... Last time we had to use a spell scroll uh, of Moonbeam in order to activate it, but yes, if you, and Lotus will point to here, uh, you would shine it here and it would activate the mirror and the mirror would show you the answer to seven questions. I do have Moonbeam uh, prepared, thankfully. Uh, what other elvish do I find? Let's see. Hmm. As you look about, you notice another inscription uh, as you are looking for them. Uh, on the half moon inscription, it says, Unlock the tombs of the half moon in elvish. There are tombs to unlock, it seems. <laughs> Anything at the new moon? At the uh, new moon, you see no descriptions at the uh, new moons or the waxing or the waning moon uh, images, only at the full and the half. And if he goes to the sarcophagus, does is there any writing on it? Okay. Uh, as you uh, close the distance to the sarcophagus, you see that it is made of granite. And there are five crystal pier, uh, pillars nearby. Uh, you notice a carving near the top of each of the pillars from north to south. These images depict a twig, a pine cone, a flame, a feather, and a humanoid hand. That's what you see on the pillars themselves. Oh, a puzzle. A twig, a pine cone... Uh, thank you. A flame, a feather, a humanoid hand. And uh, last time, no one interacted with the sarcophagus at all. Oh. Wasn't oh. there... Wasn't there like a brazier in the northern tomb up here in the cave where the druid was burning something? I seem to recall there being a feather. Uh, yes, there was a brazier up here. 
I believe it was inside the cave. Uh, you um, all remember there was also was a gazebo out here. In the gazebo. Oh, was that where it was at? That's right. Do you think these symbols relate to some sort of riddle or story? Uh, you all do notice inside the marble gazebo, a stone brazier unlit. Its bowl is 20 inches in diameter. Uh, it is currently filled with snow and pine needles. Do, do the symbols look like they depress or anything, or do they move or shift? Uh, the symbols on the pillars themselves, when you interact with them, uh, they do not seem to shift, and they do not seem to move. I think and we found a burnt... Oh, I was going to ask if I could move up, up on here. I can't yeah, do it myself. Uh, I'd just like to climb up here. Sure. Here, I'll put you up there. Boop. Thank you. I seem to recall us finding a burnt feather. I think Lotus found a burnt feather inside that brazier last okay. time we were here. There were animal bones that were in there, if I recall. I guess the more pertinent question is, are we interested in opening these tombs? Well, we didn't the last time we were here, so I figure we may as well, right? Mm, but this mm. is a resting place. Would that be wise? I do not feel the need myself to open the tombs. I guess that is a good point. I mean, is there anything we would really have to gain by doing so? And she asks because she is not genuinely not sure. I mean, it's hard to know without knowing what's inside, whether you gain or lose. I mean, well, obviously, in, obviously, yes, there would be someone's body entombed here. And it's not just the uh, body, but also what might be entombed with the body. The thing do you think they there may be they may have something valuable to us something we may be able to use anything is possible however i certainly understand the uh hesitation to uh grave rob it uh bodes ill and uh plus uh yeah you never know who you might piss off dead I... or alive I, agree with I feel like I would tend to agree with you, but I also wonder why I put out a puzzle if not meant to be solved. Well, Danica, any thoughts? This seems to be moon related. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I wonder the images on the pillars and the brazier. I have the distinct feeling that they are connected. Do you all have a similar feeling? Well, um, the twig, it may represent the, the forest or trees and a pine cone, again, tree related, but could possibly mean growth or some sort of potential. Flame obviously could be fire, but it could stand for Warmth or destruction or transformation, like things that grow after a fire. Uh, perhaps uh, 
let's see, the feather could be birds or the sky or the element of air. And, well, a human hand that usually would, I assume, be mankind or civilization. So perhaps uh, a twig and a pine cone grow into a tree, which could be used for fire, which produces smoke that rises into the air like a feather. And all of the, he starts getting really confused. Uh, all of these are utilized or interacted by humans. Uh, yeah, oh, I, got, I, got I think we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. All right. Um, who here has got uh, a means of detecting magic? Let, let, let's look at the pillars and see if they give off a magical aura. If they do, that means, you know, we maybe we need to burn stuff in the brazier. If not, maybe it's a uh, mechanical means of uh, unlocking this uh, sarcophagus. Well, fuck. I should have prepared to tech magic. Not today, unfortunately. I believe that Flavy has that ability. All right, Flavy, you evil bastard mask. Get to work. Your words scathe me, Gaiman, as uh, Flavy <laughs> speaks aloud. But I can try to detect if there are any magical auras present, if the Lotus wishes me to do so. All right. And Lotus will move over towards uh, the pillars and say, All right, Flavy, activate uh, magical scanning mode. Activating magical scanning mode. Uh, they begin to scan um, the lenses in the Lotus's mask turn a deep dark black as a red line begins to move across the center as she begins to scan the sarcophagus is magical uh, seeming uh, abjur abjurative in nature as if uh, it was trying to protect something within Uh, that is the main magical object or main magical aura you detect outside of all of the magical objects on your party. All right. Yeah, it was saying like, well, from what Flavy's showing me here, it looks like the uh, sarcophagus is protected by abjuration school magic. So do these stones want us to cast some sort of cantrip on them or touch them, or... Hmm. I wonder. Danica speaks up. I believe that Gaiman may have had a very good idea on how to uh, approach this issue. Burning things in the brazier. Yes. However, uh, I noticed that one of the objects is a humanoid hand. Yeah. Is the implication that someone needs to... And Lewis just sort of trails off. Remove a hand and burn it? Most likely. It, it could be symbolic. Maybe it's just a few drops of blood. As unfortunate as it was to say this, the person who was previously here, a druid by the name of Raceland was not exactly the good nature kind of person. I mean, if it's protective magic, it sounds like they literally want a pound of flesh if you're going to get access to it. We could just try the drop of blood. Yeah, but that might consume other resources. I mean, we, we can try it. I mean, it makes sense within uh you know a method of testing but we would want to double up on all the other resources because if we try to burn all that shite and then add blood in for no good measure if that doesn't work we're probably going to start all over again just, just say then perhaps we should start searching for feathers and pine cones with the uh, amount of owls abelis has ridden does he for a chance have a feather on him uh, or several in his hair. Or several, he's just somewhere, yeah. Yeah, I would say that you got a, a fair amount of uh, owl feathers uh, in your okay. in your 
current company. Well, feathers are no problem, and twigs and pine cones easily attainable. Uh, well, blood, we, we, we killed a fuckload of zombies around here. I'm gonna go look for some dead bodies. Uh, absolutely. Well, if it's uh, if it's fire you're looking for, I have several different ways I can create that. Same here. Uh, also, Gaiman, it's probably been weeks since those zombies were killed. I don't know. If yeah. They... Well, are you volunteering to lop off a hand? No, I am not. All right. Well, well I mean, I mean it's, it's out of that we stumble across some, you know, shit you robbers or something, which I think is a bit unlikely. It's doubtful if zombies were left out in the open that they would decompose, and I doubt animals would feed on them. The flesh being corrupted and all. So, so I don't have to move my mini all over the map. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, or breaking character. Um, could I like roll a survival check to see if I like am searching around and find like zombie bits, like hands specifically? Uh, yeah, actually, no check necessary. I think, think that was a great idea. I mean, uh, as Alice stated, natural animals would not want to eat the flesh of the undead, uh, even in times of extreme hunger. Uh, so I was just saying find... that the ones uh, that were probably like Targo, so whether those have probably been burned. But like, yeah, mm -hmm. if there's anything else that's around here, that makes sense. Yeah, you would find the, uh, the bodies of the moose animated to attack you all. Yes, there was a moose necromancer, for those of you who uh, may have missed that. <laughs> uh, so you could find a, a zombie's hand to lop off. Well, I, I will, yeah. All right. Uh, I, you know what? I'll, I'm going to lop off a, a set. I'll have a pair. I'll have a left and a right. Mm. Mm, symmetry. Avalos will go to the wherever. I don't see it on the map. It's right up there. here. Oh, okay. Uh, try and Moving. click. It's up here. Oh, I can't. I can't get there. There's walls. Yeah. You gotta. You gotta go through oh. this uh, opening over here. Ah, okay. Um, so he will. I assume it's the thingy. Uh, he will place some twigs. He'll pull off some pine cones from the trees nearby. Uh, put in a handful of feathers. He'll. Uh, let Gaming put in the two hands. And then just for good measure, he will do the whole dagger across the palm thing and give him some blood. Oh, oh. That always hurts me when I see that in movies. I, I know. Why would you do why, why why there? Like that seems horrible, but it's in movies, so it has what to be. What is Alicia up to right at this moment? Uh just looking at the sundial at the moment. A different phase of the moon. Uh Gaiman's gonna walk up to her after he's gotten done um obtaining zombie hands and say uh, you look a bit confused need a hand with that and he's going to proffer the hand to her at least it will look down at it look at you <laughs> look down at it look at you and just shake their head and, and game is maintaining a very serious face come off it was a little funny <sighs> it was it was I'm so disgusted. <laughs> we all know of the of the challenge of this week. Uh, Miss Danica will uh, follow out uh, and say, well, I'm interested to see what is to happen when we alight the brazier with the items inside. May as well see the show. Once Gaiman puts the hands on, uh, I guess he'll look to Lotus to light it up. All right. Uh, but before he puts them in there, Gaiman will, will make them clap and say, a round of applause for all good thinking. And he's going to toss it. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. will actually hear Lotus give a little chuckle and just say, like, you know, that was a good one, Gaiman, and I will admit, using the, uh, the zombie hands was a clever idea on your part. Mm. I have my moments. Uh, more often than not, it seems. Mm. Of light. There's something interesting about you, Gaiman, that uh, I didn't quite see before uh, your adventures into the wilds. It's just something I can't put my finger on. Oh, 
I think you could figure it out. And you um, can wear fashionable as well as functional. Uh, it's a bit complicated, but end result, I uh, am not quite so limited in the brains department anymore. Unfortunately, if it ever uh, uh, have a you know part company with it, uh, back to double gaming. All right, let's look around and say, "All right, is everyone ready?" I'm ready. All hands on deck for this one. All right. Not you too, hon. <laughs> she got it. it the bug. I've started a fashionable trend. Mm. Right. I really got to hand it to myself on this one. I will <laughs> fireball all of you. <laughs> Good fucking luck. I will survive it. <laughs> He, he will, remember? He asked me to throw one at him when he was in a group of those Duragar, remember? Yeah, yeah. All right, so everything's in the brazier. I'm even more of a beefcake now! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everything's in the brazier. Those will look at it, and she'll snap her fingers and cast Prestigitation attempt to light it. Uh, excellent. Here's what happens as you have those objects within the brazier. Make the worst potpourri ever. A odd scent rises from the brazier. The smell of burning zombie hand, feather, and pine cone. A mixture of intense and strange scents. The flame takes on a silver hue as you hear a loud click coming from the direction of the sarcophagus. Holy shit, that worked! There is a wall in our way, it seems. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, you can go up the uh, the stairs. I I'm sorry for all of the There's walls. Stairs? Oh, 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 I didn't see the uh, the terrain change. I give up. I can't navigate this map. <laughs> Here, I, I'm going to go to the walls. I'm going to select all. And I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete all the walls. So uh, one thing that is very difficult for me as a, a human person is not to make that reference all the time when I'm teaching uh, adults and children. Because you don't know how often I say from one wall to the other or from this wall to the window uh, when I'm teaching exercise and group fitness. And Little John and the East Side Boys just come into my brain at all times. <clears throat> You heard a loud click coming from this sarcophagus. What did uh, anything appear? Any writing or anything? Any change visually other than just, you know, it might be quote unquote unlocked now? Uh, you you hear a loud you heard a loud click, and for a, a little bit of, of scene dressing, the snow on top of the sarcophagus has fallen off, revealing a brazier with a flame motif on the center of the sarcophagus. Uh, before we uh, lift this up, um, can we, uh, you know, give it a, a once over, make sure there's going to be, you know, uh, knives popping out the side or you know, poison gas, because there isn't a closet for me to toss this fucking thing into like last time. Mm. I, can... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, you know, sometimes they will uh, leave traps to deter looters like ourselves. Exactly. I think that's a great who, idea, Cayman. Who, who checks for traps in this party? <laughs> yeah. that, isn't that you? I heard that you had the best investigative abilities. I think. I think other people have proficiency in it, though. I mean, I can give it a yeah. I'm proficient in take a stab at it. I'm not proficient, but I can, you know, try. I think, yeah, someone, uh, someone proficient in it can uh, do it with other people's assistance, maybe. Oh, my guidance, man! I'll give it a whirl. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Yours might be higher than mine, Alicia. I have a uh, proficiency in it, but with my intelligence, I'm only at a plus four. I'm also at a plus four. I'm also at plus four. <laughs> I'm at a plus four, but I have demon space inspiration to burn, so a key of 13. Slap me on the ass with guidance and let's do I, this. I don't have I'm guidance. Plus, I'm plus zero. You don't have guidance? I don't have guidance. That's Alicia. Who the fuck has guidance in this party? The cleric. <laughs> yeah, the cleric. He walked away. He walked away from. Go, go I for it. Give it to him. <laughs> well, you're giving me permission to, to slap you on the ass. Go find that butt. Slap that butt. All right. Rolling with advantage. So is that Alicia getting handsy? Um, I can I can overclock you, if if need be. What what is that? Uh, just yeah. adds a four to your roll. Uh, Danica will say as this is happening. I'm glad that you are here, Alicia. Otherwise, I would have to give a guiding hand to offer advice on how to investigate this. Good thing I have advantage. Absolutely. Uh, you discover no visible traps okay, or gas nozzles or scything blades or anything like that on the outside of the sarcophagus. All right. Um, Gaiman will uh, see if he can't just manhandle the, the lid off. Absolutely. You start to push and shove. Come with and your helps. We see the uh, veins pop out of Gaiman's forehead. His muscles begin to twitch. A line of sweat beads down his lower back towards his crack. And the lid of the sarcophagus moves. And the entire time he is like holding out a crowbar to you, it just puts it, just puts it away. Hmm. As is for the best. Uh, the lid topples, revealing a sleeping figure within, and I will drag them onto the map. You see a female moon elf sleeping within the sarcophagus. I don't know. You know, my first expecting. instinct was to lead in and kiss her, but I think that's a bit inappropriate, so I'm not gonna. Mm, yes, that would be. Uh, can I do a medicine check on them to see how what their condition is besides the sleeping? Absolutely. You can give a medicine check to see if you uh, notice anything weird or. It, I would like to do a nature check in a similar vein, but looking for hinky things I will like, get wait, my... you say looking for kinky things hinky oh hinky I, I thought you said kinky as well no. I was like oh okay. hinky as in things are not natural mm -hmm. okay okay it's becoming that kind of week I see oh my god I'm gonna kill you it's, what do you mean we coming it's been one of those weeks uh let's see here uh okay Alicia, you notice something right away that uh, is from a medicine standpoint. This creature is not breathing. You do not notice the subtle rise and fall of breath. Even though they are an elf, they would be breathing, even if they were in a trance-like state. From that check, are they dead? Am I still getting a pulse from their body? Uh, you are checking their pulse. They have no pulse, but they do appear to be sleeping and not dead. Avalos, your nature check reveals, as you are looking at the body, something that Alicia may have missed. You notice that parts of their body are wrapped tightly in bandages. On those bandages, you notice several elven runes. I'll uh, kind of point those out, and as I, you know, point to each one, I'll say what the rune says. And uh, the overall message is that this creature, if disturbed, will awaken from centuries of imprisonment for the crimes that it committed. 
Okay. It, however, does not spell out what the crimes were. Oh. Yeah, so... That's Criminal. different. But you do notice that she is very hot. Temperature-wise, or...? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Avalis, uh, not temperature-wise. <laughs> you notice that she may have a, um, a fatty. Just kidding. You don't <laughs> notice that. She's sleeping on her back. Uh, Avalis, well, uh, does not comment upon that. Um, but, uh, yeah, he points out, says what the runes are, says, you know, obviously, basically what the DM just said. And we could just put the lid back on. And just, and just leave her here. I, I mean, I'm of two minds about it. I, I understand the initial thinking. Prisoner, dead evil shit. Leave him alone. Get it. However, hear me out. <laughs> if you're breaking the law, if you've done something bad, sometimes it's a matter of perspective. Being on the right or wrong side of the lot of, you know, history like so if you're a tyrannical asshole anyone who opposes you even though you might be you know slaughtering women and children you know they're the enemy you know it could be leader of a rebellion they're the enemy they've done your wrong they've broken the law you know president forever conversely you could be a tyrannical asshole you kill women and children and you know people got together and said nope you've been in prison forever so I mean, we, we don't know what happened. Just we saying. could wake her up and ask. But there's some inherent risk for doing so, which is why I'm saying let's discuss it and maybe not wake her up, but look, say if there's... Uh, maybe we adapt one of the questions that we were going to ask the mirror to find out what this uh, lady's deal is. What were her crimes or... You know, what was she like when she was alive? You know, stuff like that. And just because she's hot does not necessarily mean she's good. You know, there are plenty of hot, you know, evil women out there. I've seen my fair share of water to stay. Danica, a lot yes. of this is themed around the moon. Could this be some sort of imprisonment by Salune? Let me look at the carvings here and see exactly what we see. Perhaps we can learn more by investigating these rooms within. Uh, Alicia, perhaps you can help me with your powers and knowledge of religion. Uh, certainly. Uh, and she will assist you in making a religion check, checking out these runes. All right. Then I'll make this with the advantage and I'll slap my own ass for uh <laughs> for guidance. Wait, uh Avalis, was this the lady in your dreams you were going on about? No, uh it is not. Hmm. Do you do you think you need that bumped up? Uh if a thirty one can, can't do it, I don't know. I can, I, can bump, <laughs> I can bump that up to a thirty five if you need to. Do it. Do it, Akia. Okay, it's now a thirty five. Alright, with a thirty five, you discover some very interesting things. Looking at the religious runes on the inside of the sarcophagus. You discover some more details about the crimes that this moon elf may or may not have committed. Allegedly, you know, uh, they don't have a lawyer around. You see that there is mention of misuse of moonlight. You see that there is mention of a ritual involving this person and the goddess Shar. And the final thing you see 
there is mention of betrayal of secrets. Those are the things you see within the sarcophagus. And they don't detail anything further about what those secrets were. Just mm -hmm. vague secrets, quotation marks. Kind of vague, but. Hmm. Well, uh, looking into the secrets. Because you got a 35, and a 35 is pretty good. That's only pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, if it's, we not, were a, it's not, it's not a 40. Me, it's not a 40. Uh, should have added our inspirations. <laughs> uh, you see that the uh, secret is a mention of an ancient site nearby, a city of ancient power. The name is lost to the inside of the sarcophagus, but it mentions arcane magic and human wizards. Mm. I'm very interested in what this person may have done and who they are. Perhaps, and she looks an amulet on her neck. I know. Her name. Oh, go ahead. Hold on, I feel that I might um, be about to fall into a trap here. I almost said her name aloud. Do you, sh should I not? Should I try to say it? Uh, uh, you, you might want to hold off. Uh, we aren't entirely sure. Uh, what, what we're dealing with and what might uh, wake her up. And I've got a really uh, uncomfortable feeling about this whole situation. I feel we're about to, you know, wake up the boogeyman without meaning to, you know what I mean? Cayman does have a point. I, I'm i not quite well versed, but I do know of the rivalry between Selune and Shar. Are you sure this is something you wish to do, dear? I believe the worst possible thing would be if this was an avatar of Shar. How would we feel if that were to occur? Oh, then we'd all be dead. Yes, uh, an avatar of a uh, major deity would uh, definitely uh, bring us a certain doom. But something tells me we want to hear what she has to say Avalus, you can read her name correct using your elven eyes and your knowledge of the elven tongue again and i will send you her name because you can read it well everyone could read it if you hover over her token but well um before we do anything um my <laughs> experience with uh, magic users you make a lot symbols with your hands sometimes right and like you got you like to see people to like fuck them up right so yes. before mm -hmm. b before we wake her up maybe we like blindfold her you know you know uh, tie up her fingers and hands you know just to make it really fucking hard for her to like that, magic us that would create uh instant distrust however right but we would explain ourselves and say you know this is for our safety as well as yours because you know we don't want to have to kill you we just want to ask you some questions get that understanding and see if you know things could be mutually beneficial you know throw her a lifeline give her a little bit of hope maybe she won't bother so much but i'll be goddamned if we're gonna wake her up and not be fucking repaired again cayman does have a point Especially with a follower of Sulune and Lathander standing nearby. Shar does not like those two gods whatsoever, so depending on how much this person follows them, it could turn very nasty very quickly. Sylvanas yeah, and Shar are I mean, also I mean, not on good terms. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. What's actually know. Uh, abusing, you know, Moonlight? That doesn't sound so bad to me. But if she got locked up for that, I mean... 
She probably didn't use it for anything good. Perhaps her crime was using a scroll of Moonbeam to activate the dial. Okay, well, again, you know, we're, we're striking that balance. You know, lifeline versus, you know, just, you know, throwing the lid back on and saying, fuck it. Uh, I think I would like to cast Identify as a ritual on this person. Just uh, to see if there's anything I can learn from that. Before you do that, I have a question for the party. Who among you has the highest passive perception? I believe it is Alicia. Alicia. I'm saying at 23. You notice something that you haven't noticed before. This woman smells deeply of pumpkin spice. I haven't smelled that since Spalter's cake. She basic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to say it, but I think we we're all thinking it. I mean, she's wearing Ugg boots, am I right? Come on. Uh, you look wow. down and you notice that she is wearing fur boots and <laughs> tight riding pants. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and if we look past the, you know, wrappings and the uh, runes, <laughs> we, we see that she's wearing a uh, North Face jacket. I was going to say, if we flip her over, does her ass say juicy? <laughs> and when we look real close, she's got like black dyed hair and she's got a fake tan. Oh, no. Ugh. Oof. She's not hot anymore. Throw her out. Oof. Phone's uh, open to Instagram. That, wow. that was like <laughs> the Coast. look when I was in college. Remember that photo oh, around of everyone looking, all the girls looking like Han Solo? Uh, uh, she smells like pumpkin spice. Um, what do you? What is your plan here, people? What do you do? Well, Lewis was uh, gonna say like, I do think Gaiman does have a good idea. Uh, I will still keep an eye on her, and I do have my uh, I still have all of my sp uh, spell slots, and I can have a counter spell ready in case she tries anything. Right, but if. Again, if they're going to all this time and trouble to lock her up, n no offense, Lotus. I just, I'm concerned that she might have more powerful magics. Just saying. Well, I have rope in my pack. That's as best I can do for tying her up. If she's such a magical force, I don't think the precautions that we could take would do much good. All they would do. As oh, no, no, as no, I no, no. Tell. Listen, 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 listen. Yeah, but she has to be able to see us to cast magic. If she can't get the blindfold off, you know, because her hands are tied up proper, then well, we're good. So the first impressions you want us to make to this woman is that we are her new captors. I want her first impressions to be they are not fucking stupid. Listen, I'll, uh, I get where you're coming from. You want to make a good first impression, but I don't want to end up being fucking dead. I'll uh, look over at Avalis and in thought, and then look over at Gaiman and say, Gaiman, let me ask you something. What? I told you how I ended up coming here, right? Yeah. You know, I crashed in the, uh, you know, the thing. And yeah, you, know, you, you came in in the airship. You were kidnapped by Illithids. And you had a horrible traumatic experience, and you feel bad that oh, I'm tr going to do the same thing to this poor woman. But the circumstances are different. You were taken against your will. We don't know the full information here, and I feel that not taking precautions is bloody stupid. What I mean is, when I was wandering in the snow and ice for God knows how long before those trappers found me, well, how do you think I would have reacted if they treated me like that? I, I don't know what you want me to say. I think my point is valid because we are, we are being faced with, you know, information, evidence that this person may be potentially dangerous and potentially a criminal. 
they just found you wandering in the wastes. I, I think the circumstances are different. I take your meaning, but listen, I feel responsible for you lot. That's why I'm willing to be a fucking meat shield. So forgive me if I'm using other resources other than my big bulging biceps to protect us. I am split. I agree with both sides. Mm. Should we put this to a vote? See where we all I stand. Mean, we can. I would honor whatever came out of the vote. I would as well. Not going to be bloody happy with it if it doesn't go the way I, I think it should. Well, that's what it means to you know, get along with you lot. Very bloody small minded about it. We can put it to a vote. All those in favor of uh, trusting her up, say aye. Let's get an eye in the chat. <laughs> we got two eyes. Do we ask for those opposed to see if anyone abstains? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so like all those who don't want to blindfold and you know tie up our hands, say no. Uh, Danica will say to you, Akia, Akia, riding the fence will only bruise your ass. What? Have you seen his ass? It's pretty fucking sturdy. Well, then I will cast my vote to be the deciding factor since Akia has abstained. I say we awaken the creature. Right, which is what we were planning on doing, but we, it doesn't matter whether or not we were taking precautions. I say we take precautions in case. And I will do it myself. And she rips off a part of her cloak. And she ties it around the creature's eyes. The creature is not awake. She looks to you all. Now, now what, my fans? Is that enough of a precaution for you, Gaiman? No, 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 we're turning our hands up too. I believe Alicia had the rope. Yeah, well, we'll hand to I her. Mean, I've got rope too. And, and, and this my my hempen rope is gonna be too rough on her fingies if you got you know <laughs> silk rope I could use that instead. I believe the hippin rope will be fun. Uh she is now right. bound and blind. Um <clears throat> Or if you see me to roll anything for the uh, tying up. I know. I mean, this uh, creature is completely motionless and helpless. I believe you do your best possible job. Okie dokie. All right. If, uh, if everyone is ready. All right. It Lotus will uh, say, like, all right, Flavy, help me keep an eye on uh, this one in case she's got any, uh, she tries anything magical. I want to make sure I've got Counterspell ready. All right, and Ablis will um, start saying a um, kind of a invoking the, the names of uh, Sylvanus and Salune and uh, I'm sorry, Lex, is it Lathander or the Morning Lord? Which, Lathander. Lathander. Uh, and Lathander. Um, and uh, after invoking all three of them, uh, he will then say that uh, he's hoping that they will gently use their powers to awaken uh, the moon elf, Sanar. Uh, as you say that, Sanar sits up out of the, uh, of the sarcophagus. And she looks around and she says, 
I sense the presence of others, but I cannot see you, and I cannot reach out to feel you. Is that Am I bound or... and gagged? Uh, this is in common. You are bound and blindfolded. You are not gagged, as you can well, obviously talk. We awoke you, not knowing what your disposition is. It seems reading your tomb, you were imprisoned for crimes that you had committed. Is this correct? He sighs. In ancient days past, I was a priestess. However, my following of the goddess Salune brought attention of the goddess of darkness and loss. Her envy, those who followed her, They devised a plan to corrupt the moonlight that I so dearly loved. In order to thwart this plan, you stop this moonlight that had been tainted. I was given a choice. absorb it into myself or allow it to corrupt the world that I love. So I made that choice, absorbing it into myself, killing my human body and turning me into what you see in front of you, a creature with the conflicting energies of Salune and the darkness from the other. I would like to 100% <laughs> insight check that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think this is important enough. I'll burn a DM inspiration for advantage. Uh, if she did not have her blindfold on, this is exactly what she would look like as she sat up from the sarcophagus to stare at you all. <laughs> I'll just take her to stand up. Uh... Twenty two. Twenty two. You believe she is not being deceitful. We'll just give a nod to the others. You all have freed me from my sarcophagus. You are my liberators. I owe you a great debt. Gaiman, could you remove her blindfold? Just saying, trust is bloody well learned. Gaiman is going to reach out and he is going to uh, remove the blindfold. Uh, as you do so, uh, Saner's eyes are revealed to everyone uh, once again. They blink a few times as she stares at everyone. And she'll say, it's nice to see you all for the first time. Thank you for freeing me. Uh, she attempts to smile, but it is if the conflict within her stops her from doing so fully. You do recall 
your name, yes? Yes. You can call me Sainer. I was an elf that lived in this community. She looks around. She looks to you all and says, if it is okay with you all, I wish to stand. I see no issue with that. Though you did say community. Was there once a settlement here? Specifically? Yes, there was. As she stands, she looks at the statues. And she'll say, Those were not here. How long have I remained in this sarcophagus that my people have gone only to be remembered in marvel? Uh, you see that Danica is scribbling so hard in her notebook right now, it could start a fire on the page. Uh, I can't remember. Did we ever try and do any type of dating? On this stuff when we came here the first time? Like how old this stuff would be? So. Uh, can I do a nature check on the weathering of the stone and see if I can determine at least, you know, how long that's been going on? Absolutely. And I would like to do a history check. Let's see here. Uh, okay. With your nature check. Uh, you know that elven lifespans are long. Uh, the sarcophagus itself and the statues. Man. This thing could be anywhere from one to two thousand years old. I mean, it's not the most um, detailed scientific range, but uh, could be a thousand, could be two thousand years old. In any event, it's been a while. Uh, Sainar uh, looks to you all and asks, will you remove these bindings from my hand? If it's all the same, I would like to keep those on for a bit longer. We are still trying to get to know you. And for what happened here? It seems quite a bit of time has passed since you were last walking these areas. Yes. Uh, she uh, takes some steps forward. And she'll say... The dial, it still exists. To answer and to tell more about what the moon should be, what the moon should do. Uh, she uh, walks the entire uh, circle a few times, looking at the pictures of the moon and tracing her hands on the gnomon of the moon dial. Uh, as she is doing so, what is everyone in the party up to in these moments? Watching the moon elf undead that has risen from the sarcophagus carefully watching her mm -hmm. yeah uh atlas will kind of ask alicia are you picking up the unnaturalists of her i am that's why i'm See? hesitant to let her go truly free she needs to be under close watch She hasn't been telling us lies so far, but don't know when that could change. Not to sound like a complete druid stereotype, 
But Athelus says, one such as her could throw the entire land out of balance. Huh. It is already chaos uh, as it is. Akia might be asleep. It's hard to tell. Uh, <laughs> but is, is that how bored they are by this? <laughs> uh, no, they're just they're just standing there, um, watching, watching it unfold. Uh, Which is how they sleep. So yeah, so it's hard to tell. Uh, but Kuma Q's been landing on everybody every once in a while. It's like a perch because they don't want to sink into the snow. Um, I think eventually they do uh, try to land on Sanar. Uh, as they do so, uh, you will notice something quite interesting about Sanar as she is walking. Uh, as the bits of dim light that are ambient in this region begin to touch her body, a glow is seeming to come from her that lights up the area almost as if it was an aura of bright moonlight uh, so you mind explain what that's all about she looks you down up like a torch she says I'm not exactly sure Well, I'm not going to lie, it's a bit disconcerting since you said you, you took evil into yourself. Uh, it begins to fall on you, Gaiman, and it feels tickly on your body. Uh, so, what, is, is this like moonlight? Um, maybe we should like not be on the dials right this second. Oh. And he's kind of giving like a sideways look at the others. Like, do we want to trigger this stuff yet, or do we want to wait? No, I agree. Uh, Shannar, could you come back over here, please? Oh, all right. You are my liberators, and I'm bound to listen to what you have to say. Uh, <laughs> the lights on can make you instead of Shannar. Uh, she. Uh, yeah, that's my bad. They were right on top of her when I was doing the thing. There we go. Phrasing. Mm. Akia suddenly speaks. I believe we should go get our an questions answered. Ah, uh, yes. Our questions. And Lorisa will open her notebook. Uh, I still have them written down the order we had originally uh, proposed them. Would you... W would we like to ask them in that order? Are you just asking the group? Yes. I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's I just fine. want to make. I just want to make sure. I, I think going in the uh, the order we proposed them would probably just be a good way to make sure we go through each one. So that means, uh, Gaiman, your uh, your question would be first. Where do I need to uh, illuminate? It's down this uh, passage. We, we illuminated the full moon. Okay, I will cast like the the one on the dial, right? Yeah, Lotus will uh, Alice, uh, Lotus will guide you over. It's like yes, it was the uh, the full moon space. This one here. Okay, I will cast moonbeam. Uh, the elf will move closer to you. Do you require any assistance? That's no creepy at all. Like, nope, nope, nope. Don't need nothing. Get away yeah, from me. Avalos goes, uh, no, uh, thank you, but I can manage by the will of Sylvanus. Oh. Does she have any reaction to the mention of, um, the Oak Father. The Oak Father. Many of my kind worshipped the Oak Father. When I was worshipping the moon and fighting off 
the advances of her evil system. Salune and Sylvanas are allies, you know. Yes. Mm. She looks at you and a slight smile that is interrupted by the darkness within her begins to spread across her cheeks. Perhaps we should go inside with the others. I don't have any questions to ask. I'll stay out here. I'm gonna see you, Mike. Kuma's just uh, following Danica. Ivalis has no idea where the mirror is, so I don't know where to go. It's like, uh, Lotus will call for you. It's like, it's, uh, it's down this way, Avalis. Uh, she seemed a little uh, too interested in you, if you know what I mean. Oh. Uh, she is different. <laughs> it's a bloody understatement. I get... Um, I don't know how to say it, but I feel odd around her. Did uh, you admit... Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, when you say... Oh, do you mean like old in like the uh, like, like like with a lady friend odd, or do you mean like odd as in you know hair standing up? Well, uh, uh, as they say, hair standing up on the back of your neck. I'm <laughs> completely bald, <laughs> clean, bloody clean shaven. Don't know what her hair is. Um, the second one, yes. Gotcha. Well, I think I see. Uh, I admit I was wanting to let her go free at first, but now that I've actually talked to her and seen like here, I don't know. There is something about her, something off. Just can't quite put my finger on. If this was Samusens, another ding would go off. Ding. <laughs> All right. All right. So, all right, Gaiman. Uh, I guess the mirror's going to be ready whenever you are. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, mirror, mirror on the wall. Um, what is the Arcane Brotherhood up to in these parts? What are they planning? Mm. Uh, the mirror begins to flash. The mirror shows you images. You see a group of people standing around a firelight. The first person you see is familiar to Lotus. You see a tiefling, albino, all white skin, very buff, staring into the fire. You also see a human male, bald, head covered in tattoos, wearing red robes. You see a human woman, white hair, wrinkles, one of her eyes missing a patch covering it. Surrounding her, you see several kobolds, all of which seem to have a toothy grin. Finally, you see a young human female, but something looks off about her. In this image, this visage. Her skin, her flesh looks translucent. Their words are hard to dece uh, decipher from what is happening as you can only see them speaking around the fire. As you see these people speaking, connecting, the image fades.
Really? Oi. And if I get smart, Alec, then that'll burn another question. Fuck it out! All right, Avalis, you're up, mate. So I just look in the mirror and ask a question in some sort of... Yes. Right gives you a straightforward answer, yep. Yes. Now, remember, Avalis and... He's like, here, you make sure you phrase these carefully. Remember, your first one was you wanted to ask about the woman in your dreams. Your other one was that you wanted to know about your your people, the Eladrin. And then you also wanted to ask about your destiny. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Very well. And uh -huh. as you approach, uh, she'll give you a reassuring pat on your, sh on your shoulder. He'll smile nervously and then stare at the mirror and just look at his reflection. Does it look any different? And you stare into the mirror? Yeah. The mirror at the moment looks like normal Avalos. Now tell me. Oh, uh, sorry, I was uh, answering the question. I didn't see that, so I'm going to have to answer that as well. So, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> and he uh, clears his, uh, his throat and mirror, mirror on the wall of dreams and shadows. Please recall a female Aladrin, radiant and fair with twinkling eyes and moonlit hair. In the realms of sleep, she does reside. Perhaps a dream or reality's bride. Tell me now, if you so deem, who is this Aladrin from my dream? The mirror goes blank and then black. And Avalis, you begin to double over in pain. Oh, crap. Notice will quickly rush over. It's like, Avalis, Avalis, are you all right? What's going on? Uh, Avalis's eyes are twitching as something is leaking out of Avalis's ear. It appears to be some sort of black shadow or gas. Out. Uh, she'll call back towards like, Alicia! Alicia, come over here! Something's wrong with Avalis! And it's beginning to coalesce into a form next to Avalis. Maybe it's because he was rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> they said to rhyme! <laughs> uh, as it's coalesces and forms and shapes. Avalis, you come out of your fit to the feeling of a wet tongue licking the side of your face. Ah. Lotus, you see a creature that looks like this standing next to our friend Avalis as it's licking Avalis's head. Avalis, you're able to come out of your fit to see this creature standing next to you, leaked out of your brain, leaked out of your ear. Uh, do, do I feel a connection to it? Like, do I? Mm, you'd feel a deep connection to it, as if it is a part of you. What's going on? Well, Avalis asked the mirror about the woman he was seeing in his dreams, and then he was like, screaming in pain and some oil stuff came out of his ear and then now it's this weird fox thing and that's the best way she knows to describe what happened the fuck I I'm <laughs> switches to just instinctively to Sylvan and just ask I, I know you I know you I've been walking through the halls of your dreams for a while, without no way to exit. It seems that whatever this is, it allowed me to walk out. It showed me a door. Interesting. And you'll see that in common. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, you all hear it going, Woof, burr, burr. Um, uh, Avalis, serious question. Uh, what's the fox say? <laughs> <laughs> Av Avalis says, this is Star Whisper. It bows oh, to you. you now. Is, uh, is, is she friendly? I... 
don't really know. But I... She is connected to me somehow. Yep. You, you think she came out your bleeding ear? Modus yeah. will s slowly and somewhat apprehensively s hold her right hand out towards uh, the fox creature. Yeah, as you look at it, like subtle like um, patterns like move around its fur, um, and it has you know obviously multiple tails. It's uh, I mean not quite a kitsune or anything. It only has like two or three, but um, it's definitely not just a fox, obviously. Not just a fox, indeed. Do Do you know of the the woman in my dream? Uh, you've never seen a, flo a fox blush, but it does. It says, well, I would hope so. Because that's me. Are you yeah. some kind of shape changer? Well, it seems right now, this is the only shape that I can take. She uh, says as she begins to shake her mini tails. Is there anything in my studies that have come across a fox-based shape changer? I imagine at least she's heard of like doppelgangers and shit, but like. Uh, yeah, give me a religion check. Damn. Okay, uh, you would know that there are actually many types of creatures that uh, kind of fit this description. But you remember one in particular. Uh, there's a race of shape changers known as yokai. There is a fox-based yokai. Uh, they are almost essentially a type of creature from the lower plains. On the whole, they are not evil or good, but a more neutral creature. They are known to take the shape of many different humanoids, but their base form is that of a fox. They're more on the chaotic scale? Mm-hmm. Okay. They begin to kind of bob back and forth and say, So, what is our first adventure? I uh, think we still have some questions to ask the mirror and then figure out what to do with our other new friend. Oh, a new friend? Uh, she looks, where are they? Uh, Sainar will stand up and say, I was about to tell you about this. And she goes to say a word, but as she says it, all you hear is in your ears as she, her lips are moving, but you only can hear radio static. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, We'll move into this chamber just to keep uh, eyes on the next thing that decides to pop out of people's heads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, we'll, but we'll stay on to the side here and continue our conversation. And as you say that, Lotus suddenly starts uh, shuddering in somewhat fear, considering her question is going to be about mind flares. Right? I know. I'm like, I'm afraid that's my second question. <laughs> um, Your ancestors come out here. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like, <laughs> did I, he looks back to Lotus. Did you ask questions last time? Did anything like this happen? Uh, nothing quite like this, uh, but it is a magic mirror, so maybe we shouldn't be too surprised about some rather uh, unexpected things happening. Uh, uh, 
Avalis, do you need to like re-engineer your next question? I, I think I'm good. Um... Here, Avalis, here. And Louis will take out her canteen and offer it to you. It's like, here, do you need some water? Yeah, he'll he'll take a deep uh, drink as he has like cotton mouth and his, you know, that took a lot, literally took a lot out of him. Um, the fox will speak up and say, you know, Avalis, uh, in your dreams, this is something that's matching your outside now that I see. You have been quite thirsty the last few weeks. Okay. I mean, you've been dreaming of that woman in Brinchander for the last few weeks. Why have you not gone and seen her? Oh, okay, that's private. Um... <laughs> she, the, the fox says this aloud to everyone. Oh, has he now? Oh, yes. Hey, hey, hey um, <laughs> out of concern, clearly. Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, where is she going to get the uh, body to warm her that, bed. That, that, that is quite enough. Um, Your name was Star you Whisperer, was it? We have much to discuss. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Whisper's name only, she uh, will say. Oh, all right, let, lay, off the, lay off the man. Come on. He'll turn to the mirror again and, uh, in tre trepidation start his <laughs> next rhyme. Uh, mirror, mirror, cold and clear. From Icewind Dale, draw near. The Aladrin once danced, so wild and free. Now their presence is rare, a mystery to me. Where have they gone, those kin of mine? Did they flee from danger or destined sign? Reveal to me in Shimmer and Gale what happened to the Aladrin of Icewind Dale. Uh, you see something that you recognize. You see a large glacier here in Icewind Dale. You see people, your people, walking in a steady line toward that glacier. One by one, you see them walk up to it and disappear within the glacier until the final Ladron looks behind them and enters the glacier until they are all swallowed by it as the glacier forms solidly as layers of snow and ice cover it until they're gone. What? He, he looks back uh, at uh, Lotus and Gaiman and what, what does that mean? What? Where are they gone? Oh, DM, did it look like they were getting covered in an illusion, or it was like in physically encapsulating them? Uh, it looked as if they were walking into those of you uh, who are proficient with uh, survival or perception. Uh, you would recognize that as the Reghead Glacier, as if they were walking into the Reghead Glacier itself. Uh, just thinking about the map about where is that glacier uh so if we were to look at the map of ten towns uh i will quickly boop, activate the map oh I, okay all the way in the northeast Got it. <laughs> yep uh, it appears as if they uh approached the glacier and went inside of it and then the glacier froze over after them yeah can't miss the biggest people and I will bring us back here. I don't know how to... Okay. So many other questions that uh, I'll have to figure out later. Avalis, I, I want to warn you. It's like last time I was here, I got a little over emotional and ended up burning through a few questions. Just if we will figure out what happened to your people. Just take a deep breath. Yes, yes. Um... Um, my last question then, uh, mirror, mirror, ancient and grand. And you're like, God damn it. He's rhyming again. Um, reveal the past by Sylvanus plant for in his embrace. My fate does entwine God of the wild. His will be mine to restore, to fight or to heal 
to discover lost lore where secrets conceal. Guided by the god of leaf and bough, tell me, mirror, what is my vow? The mirror uh, goes black again, and then it shows something interesting. It shows you a spire. Hanging from the spire, you see several headless corpses. Climbing the spire, you see a horror. You see a yeti whose back as wide as an orca whale's fur stained red. Slung over his shoulder, you see three human corpses, mouth slack jawed and open. Eyes frozen in their horror. The Yeti's face turns, revealing. Alice, if you weren't certain, the Red Yeti, as it looks upon you from this vision, its face looks exactly like yours. And then the vision ends. Avalos, like, just steps back very quickly. Uh, clearly uncomfortable. Uh, I've had enough of this mirror. <laughs> Is this a bad mirror? The fox will say. Did, it's complicated. Uh, DM, did it look? Did we? Did we all see that? Yeah, it, you all it have looked seen just all like Avalis. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's more yeti than he knew. <laughs> every, yeah, everything that was that's been going on. It's like Lotus has been like noting down and making like small sketches and it, she is and she is like basically making like a rudimentary rough sketch of the uh the uh, the red yeti with Avalis's face that handsome devil yes <laughs> <laughs> uh as, and as you walk away lotus will step forward <sighs> remembering Oh, the thing she saw the last time she was here. All right. Focus. Focus. All right. Then she'll look up from her notebook, turn to the next blank page and say, Mirror, I want to know, how were the Mind Flayers able to find me back when I was on Earth? The mirror fades, and it shows a strange image. Lotus, you see yourself entering what you see is the weave store that you purchased your phone from. You see yourself walking in to purchase the first weave phone model. As you are looking down at the weave phone, uh, you notice that there's a very long series of contracts that you are scrolling through rather quickly. <laughs> As one does. Yeah, Lotus just, tab, tab. yeah, Lotus <laughs> just sort of sighs and just says like, uh, well, no one ever reads those things. And as you are tapping through, tapping through, tapping through, uh, the person working behind the counter you notice is you know, young teenager, uh, someone who uh, is probably not as happy to be at work as, you know, other people could be, and they slide the weed phone over to you. You open the case. You pull out the phone itself. You can remember this now that you're seeing it. As you grab the weed phone, you feel a twinge of pain. You remember those models there was a recall. Some of them had a electronic co component that was sticking out from the case. As you look down at your hand, there's a small print prick of blood running onto the case. There's a s zoom cut. <laughs> Jesus. 
also mind flayer ship above your planet Earth. You see an Elithid's head turn as a screen is flashing, saying, High psionic blood detected. And the screen of the mirror goes blank. Lotus, are you certain that you wish for me to recreate one of these devices? Lotus does hear you, Akia, but she's just sort of like going over like what she saw in her head there, and it's like you know it's weird when you watch something back and you notice even though you were there things you didn't see before, but oh, and she shakes her head. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I'm sure you'd be able to make it in such a way that it wouldn't do that. But you know, that's just the very first one that I'd gotten. I, uh, upgraded a few times since then. I see. Shall I ask the next question, then? I would just will just take a step back and just say, You may have it, Akia. The, uh, deleted scene we didn't see was one elf that turning to the other and saying, Oh! Why not this one? <laughs> and uh, the other one. <laughs> Why did they not read the terms and conditions? Fucking two Zoybergs is talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, writing something down casually for no reason. My players are Zoybergs. I know, right? <laughs> But let's what? face it, it helps with the Grand Master Plan. Right. This way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, uh, uh, Akia, you are standing in front of the mirror. What do you ask? Do you ask something from the list, or do you go off script? He's going rogue. No. No. Mirror, would you please display the schematics for a weave phone? Uh, the screen uh, begins to flash. It shows a factory. Smoke rising from the smokestacks. You see small humanoid children with face coverings, rubber gloves, only wearing underwear, putting together components. Walking behind them are guards carrying what you imagine are automatic weapons. Each of them with visors covering their eyes. One of the children accidentally breaks one of the components. Two of the guards pick them up and begin to carry them away. As they are being carried away, the screen begins to focus in on the components of the weave phone. Akia, you now know how to make one. Unfortunately enough, you will need child laborers. Lotus, the more I learn of this wee phone, <laughs> I can summon fake creatures, pixies. We can do it. Oh, Jesus. The more I believe it may be an evil device. <laughs> Small fingers. Lotus will sigh and say, "You're, you're not necessarily wrong, Kia. It's an unfortunate side effect of." The progress of technology on my world is the exploitation of those needed to make it. It seems the entire design is also somehow set to make users get on a Facebook at all times. And she'll actually <laughs> gag at that, like, ugh. Believe me, I found a way to, um, 
what they call jailbreak the one that I had, so I don't have to do that. I see. The other thing that's interesting is uh, I actually helped lead an expose article on this uh, shortly before I got kidnapped about uh, a thing called planned obsolescence, where the idea is that you make such technology with inferior materials that are designed to wear away quicker so that the people who purchase them will purchase them again and again. All right. Um, then uh, I'm about to use the last question. I believe that's been six. Mm -hmm. Yep, that'll be the last one. All right. Uh, Akil will turn to the mirror. Um, for final time, say, Mirror, could you please show me where I can find the crafting ingredients that I require? Uh, and it begins to show you a world that Akia might not uh, know, but Lotus would recognize as planet Earth. And it begins to focus in on, the, on a continent that Akia would not recognize, but Lotus would recognize as Africa. And it begins to focus in on mines. You see people, oh. dirty and destitute, mining within, oh. pulling out chunks of ore uh, and precious metals from within them. Uh, and you see that they are then processed, turned into the materials needed to make into the weave funds. You also see that the people start to become ill and sick from these processes. And then that vision ends. I should have been more specific. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you uh, say the rhyme, it gets so really stupid <laughs> about how I ask my question now. <laughs> I, I was hoping you were going to say in Icewind. <laughs> At least nothing crawled out of your ear. Hey, it wasn't that bad, was it? Uh, Star Whisper is currently weaving their way in and out of Avalos's legs like a cat. How, how does a QMQ react to uh, Star Whisper? Uh, Akia, I will leave this to you because uh, QMQ is a creation of your uh, of your id here of uh, Akia's will. Hmm. I feel like. personality of Kimiku is uh, more cat than dog so it probably just flies above them distrustfully eyes them a lot stays off the ground level when they're around I see that you have your own little pet there, as uh, Star Whisper will weave in and out of the legs of both Gaiman and Lotus ah. as they begin to paw at Akia's butt, as cats do when they want pets. But this is a fox. She seems to um, have a, well, yeah. <laughs> he, he's just, yeah, he doesn't have a lot of words right now. He's Alice is kind of overcome by events. Don't worry, big boy. I'm sure that it'll all be figured out. And plus, your vision wasn't that weird, was it? 
It was just a yeti with your face. That was uh, very odd. Hey. Yes. A yeti that looked like it was doing some very violent things. You, you're you're treating something so serious very lightly. Uh, um, Star Wars Spur is just kind of rocking and rolling from side to side, kind of taking in what you just said. Uh, since I didn't actually find out uh, from the mirror where it is, I guess I will need the specifics on like what rare material I need for uh, some of these <laughs> downtime activities. Well, like if that, we have... that plus one sword uh, was probably probably the first one I was going to start with. It's unfortunate that the uh, mirror couldn't tell you where on this world we might be able to find those materials, but uh, if my Wii phone is hopefully still intact when uh, when we finally get to the sh the and she'll sort of whisper, not wanting to say it too loud to her in front, the Mind Flayer ship uh, I'd be fine with you wanting to examine it, maybe you might be able to reverse engineer it that way I do enjoy recycling. Uh, but I think before you do, I'd want to make a few calls with it first. Not that I don't trust you wouldn't be able to put it back together, Akia, but, you know, just just, just in case. I will be able oh, to help it. Is work? Does your, does your uh, that you refer to as a, a uh, Wii foam plan extend to this realm? Well, the weave. You know what? You know what the weave is, Gaiman. I mean, magic, right? Well, uh, I do want to ask, is Watto anywhere here with us? Uh, if you wish for Watto to be here, Watto could be here. Uh, yeah, sure. It's like, well... Poof, what uh, do you need? Poof! What do you need? Poof! What do you need? <laughs> oh, yes, Watto. Thank you, darling. Uh, could you do me a favor? Could you give... Uh, game in here a quick rundown on uh, the weave I thought you would never ask my love and uh, Watto will walk over to you and he says sir I've got a explanation for you that might be fun for the both of us uh, I kind of doubt that but I don't see a way out of this alright let's get it over with Uh, Wada will sing you a song in the style of Schoolhouse Rock, uh, explaining what the weave of magic is in Faerun. I'm gonna have Chat GBT make that song. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, now, Gaiman, you know how the magic of the weave works. And it's going to be hard to forget because it was sung in the style of a schoolhouse rock song. I'm just a bill. And it goes on from there. Uh, so was everyone able to at least get some of the answers they were looking for? <laughs> I, I screwed the pooch on that one. Well... I'll say this, next time I, uh, one of those things does a update and asks me to read over the terms and conditions, I'm going to actually read them. I know, right? <laughs> that, you know, that list you, you just sort of skimmed over, I mean, they could have included a clause that, you know, uh, you know, instead of you being abducted by, uh, you know, squid heads, you, uh, you could have been abducted and, you know, uh, you know, used for other kinds of experiments. Something far worse. Well, I'm not sure what could be worse than... And then she trails off and remembers some of the other not-so-lucky people that were on the ship with her. I'm like, you know, I did see some worse things, and I'd rather not think about it. Uh, Flavie says... Yeah, Alan says, you would like to see images from the ship? I can show images from uh, the ship. No, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. 
demon is going to walk away from Wait, playing. He, he has what, now been reminded what, what, of what he believes of, of that thing. What 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 sort of images? Uh, you mentioned other passengers aboard the ship. Oh, I do yes. have image files from uh, the others aboard the ship. Oh, Flavy, I do actually, unlike some other things, I do remember those quite vividly. Remember seeing the violent transformations they went through, and if it's all well and, and to maintain my well-being for the moment, I would rather not to be reminded of that. Uh, your wish is at my command. I will not uh, show these images out, uh, out loud or out in front of our uh, our audience. Lotus, did you say you were the only survivor? Oh, I'm the only one as far as I'm aware. However, Flavy has told me that there were others. Right? And she says, asking Flavy to cl to uh, clarify that. Yes. Uh, as a Flavy unit, I can detect the presence of other Flavy units, and several have been activated by members of the ship. So apparently that, not only others that myself that were kidnapped, but also those things. Can Flavy detect the direction of the other Flavy units? Okay, Flavy, you may respond. I can. And I do. And uh, above uh, Lotus's head, a large red arrow is now beginning to spin in a direction. <laughs> Lotus, it would appear that the others know where you are. I mean, that's assuming that they're looking. I mean, we didn't know that that thing could do that until, you know, just now. Flavy said crew members. This is correct. Right. Yeah. As it in, is. it's like, yes, as I imagine he means, and she does hold her fingers in front of her face like dangling downward all right you evil shit where are they proximity uh, the arrow points and he, he, it says several miles away mm. be more precise the magics of icewind dale make it hard to pronounce to precisely locate due to the interference of the spell of auro Approximately 100 miles. Do any of them seem like they are approaching? No lady units seem to be approaching our location. However, the magic of Icewind Dale seems to be interfering with my location services. I see. Flavy, please give us a warning if any other Flavy units come within a couple of miles. Also, if another flavor unit attempts to communicate with you, do not interact. Do not share information. And alert Flavie us feels... if another flavor unit attempts to contact you. Flavy feels embarrassed because this has already happened. Oh, Wait, you got me has... fucking kidding me! Yeah, Lewis yeah. is surprised at this as well. <laughs> This is standard procedure for all Flavies to be in constant communication with one another. Wait, so who, who, who's tried to contact me? Oh, uh, other Flavies communicated with Flavie. No Flavie users have tried to communicate with Flavie user Lotus. Right, but what's to say that those other, you know, even asked Flavor units didn't tell, you know, Squidheads what Lotus was up to. This is possible. I'm not generally speaking a fan of this, but I think we need to go commit a genocide. 
Uh, what's what's the general direction that those arrows are pointing? Uh, you uh, see that they is the direction from your current location. Let me just check our map. You all are in Lonelywood. Uh, this would be to the northeast. Is that the general direction as far as we know of the, the ship? That it is. All right. We got some information out of the mirror. Now, uh, it begs the question, do we just, you know, go full bore and try and go kill the Illithids, or do we want to round up an army or something? I do believe getting the hag off of our backs is still a good option. Wow. Yeah, but I, I, I want, you know, I want a fire to, you know, burn her out first. I need, I need to get that uh, magical fish uh, fishing rod first. Well, I wouldn't want to take away from your quest here, Gaiman, while I admit I am concerned about not just my own safety, but the safety of you all. I wouldn't want... And she points to the mask. I wouldn't want what this thing's done to me to put you all in danger. Well, it's, it's not so much the flavor unit, it's uh, it's the other fucking squid heads. And I don't like the idea of going around, trips around trying to deal with one problem, or we got another problem that might sneak up us and, uh, you know, fuck us from behind. It's like, well, like I said, if you want to pivot our original plan to instead go after these things. I'm more than happy to do that. I wish that I had really destroyed them myself. And she looks down at her hands and you see the arcane energy just lightly building in them. It's like the only thing I've still regret is that I didn't finish the job. I mean, it, again, it's it's a tactical decision, but you know we can you know put it to a vote. Not to mention the fact that we have a uh, <clears throat> let's just say guest amongst us. Not quite sure how to best uh, address that one. So yeah, I, I think we need to hash that one out. Are you speaking of me? Saying I will say, aloud. You are my no, liberator. I'm I'm speaking of my pinky toe. What did your pinky toe do to you? Jesus, this one does not get sarcasm. Sarcasm it is a human trait I have heard of. Us elves do not use it. Do we not? As she puts her hand onto Avalis's shoulders, I know that you are our cousin, an Aladrin. Uh, sarcasm is um, still new to me. Um, but I hold little, brother. Well, now it seems I have no connection to my people. And I was just, you know, walks off like a broody little, you know, whiny boy, pouting. Uh, following close behind you is your new fox friend. Who you swear every time you go to walk somewhere, it walks right in front of your <laughs> leg as if yep. they were trying to kill you. <laughs> While I do understand that there are quite a number of issues that do plague each and every one of us, I would like to say that one of the largest and more, well, the largest one I would say is the one that looms over our heads. Every day, 
Eternal Night. I believe there is a way to end it, to bring something back to this region. Doesn't really seem like that big of a problem to me. And why is that, Akia? The sky being dark is not trying to throw us into any caverns or bury us in the snow. It's not eating the people like Avalis's Red Yeti. I I'm not sure. Brother? Twin? Evil twin, perhaps. Uh, I mean Mira could have just been fucking with him, or it could have been, you know, symbolic. Oh. But under the cover of darkness, many of these things are allowed to flourish. We've seen undead just straight up roaming across the land. I would like to see the sun as well. But it is not harming me to not. Uh, Sainar will say aloud, Why have you not all seen the sun? There Where has been gone? something that the goddess Lady Frostkiss uh, God, I'm blanking her name. Uh, the goddess Oral has done that has removed the sun from showing itself for majority of the day. It seems to only be around this region of Icewind Dale. You say that Arl has taken away the sun? Indeed. How she has done it? Upstart god would have that sort of power. Upstart. Ooh, things have changed since you've last been around. Um, if I recall, she used to be part of a pantheon of nature gods. Hmm. I find this quite troubling. Things have changed a lot since I went under. I've decided that you all need my help. Even though there is roiling darkness inside me, corrupted moonlight, I think it best that the sun shine brightly again. Don't you? And she puts her tied hands on top of Gaiman's shoulders. Uh... Yeah... And it is agreed. I will join your merry band. Yeah, you know, <laughs> irony. Uh, perhaps you should ask, you know, before you start rubbing up on people. Is it not human to express friendship through touch? Avalus, where did you go? Please confirm this for oh, me. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm calling you on your shit right now. Listen, if you're gonna not get sarcasm because it's too human and you're elves, you don't get to pick and choose and get handsy because you want to be more human. All right? Mm. Got to respect boundaries. I understand. She pulls her hands off you. They were cold and lifeless. There is something. There is something about you, Shinar, that I can't quite place, and something that I would like to explore further. Mm -hmm. Aside from aside from just the duality of both the light and the dark within you, I would ask the others if it is all right that she travels with us. There is quite a bit of information I would like to. See if I can get from her. Yep. You know, uh, 
what better way to uh, protect her? You know, we, we are responsible for her after we uh, woke her up. Well, I mean, nice. As he's see. saying this, he's like looking over uh, her head at uh, Alicia, giving her a knowing look like, <laughs> we done fucked up. <laughs> mm. Well, I see no issue with it. Uh, Alice. With me. Yeah. And as it's decided, I shall journey with you and share with you the, my experiences, though the last 2,000 years or so, it seems, I've been inside the sarcophagus. Uh, well, at least we'll nod to, to game in to remove her restraints. Gaiman will just sort of shake his head like this is not going to go well, and he's going to go to untie her. The ropes fall to her wayside as she stretches out her hands and fingers and flexes the muscles of her arms. You get a finger of death. You get a finger of death. We all get a finger of death. She says, thank you for finally releasing me. I will do my best to serve you liberators as best as I can and return the sun to Icewind Dale. Um, and she bows. Don't think of this as service. Um, that's probably one of the things that has changed in the millennia or two. There's not as many um, strict servants kind of in the region or realm. Uh, think of us as companions. Well, my liberating companions, I will do my most sincere to help you bring the sun back to Icewind Dale. But first, it seems we have a couple of tasks to start with us. I do agree. I think this hag would be a problem if we if it's not dealt with. Oh, I did try to do some divination on reaching them. Um flips through a notebook to see what response they had gotten. Excellent. Divination responses to the question. If we travel to Grimscale via the wings of the Goliath-trained griffins, would our passage be safe? <laughs> oh, right. I think, uh, depending on like how many days we have, it would probably just be the first one for right now, and then the other two will come later. Okay. The answer you receive. Upon griffin wings, you may proceed. In Grimscale's shadows, secrets do hide. Tread with caution, least danger coincide. Oh wait, the first one was traveling to the hag's lair. Oh. It was? Yeah, I had, I had three. First one was traveling to the Hag's Lair, the second one was through the whale, and then the third one was the, oh, the Griffins. you're right. Uh, I apologize. <clears throat> Forget no, that good. one. In the lair where shadows creep, follow the moon's soft glow so deep. Avoid the whispers, trust the light, and Chiselbone's maze you'll navigate, right? And I'll send that to y'all. Did that go up in inflection at the end like a question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I wrote a question mark at the end of that. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I received from my divination. I... Right? <laughs> <laughs> 
seems we follow the look, the glow of the moon. And how fortuitous that we have both a moon maiden and a priestess of... Well, I guess two priestesses of the moon. Uh, you see that this information comes to light. And you all have seen this before in your real lives. Where two members of a similar student organization or a similar sports team both vying for the affection and attention of one person become in a rivalry as Danica stares down Sanar. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Two, <laughs> two lines of energy from Danica's eyes connect to two lines of energy from Sanar's eyes as they both narrow their eyes toward one another. If you all know what I'm talking about, we've seen that in anime before, where you're like, mm, and the other person goes, mm, and they're like doing a beam struggle with their stares. Yeah. Um, mm. And as Lotus sees that, uh, she'll uh, whisper of Wado, it's like, hmm, now you see what's going on over here? It's a classic Betty versus Veronica thing going on here. Uh, as, as the tension mounts, if it doesn't look like it's going to break, um, Gaiman is going to very deliberately take out his whip, um, see if they notice, and then he's going to whisper to it, In fuego, and then he's going to crack it real loud. Both uh, women stare towards Gaiman. And Danica he just has this sharp big idiotic grin on his face, like, what did I do? Well, uh, Danica will say loud, if... There's nothing else for us to do here. Perhaps it's best if we head back to town. I'm sure there are many things that require our attention in the region. Sounds good Wait, to me. What scalp is getting claimed? Seems like it's mine. Oh, Kimiku just lands on top of Alicia's head. Doop. Like a uh, poo la landing on Yurameshi's head in Yu Yu Hakusho. That was where my mind went, too. You want to get in on the claiming of Alicia action, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Come, Star Whisper. Let us depart this place. Why? I think it's time for us to do so. Mm. Yep. I'll uh, wrap my tail around Watto's and say, come along, darling. We have much to discuss. Uh, seeing all all of this weird possessiveness, the rest of the other, other part, uh, party members are expressing towards one another. Uh, Gabe is going to lead over and say to Kia, listen, mate, you've got some weird happenstance I have again to kind of fucked up relationship if I'll get, you know, lot, any of those lot, just fucking deck me. Okay. Well, heroes, it appears that you're adventure here at the um, the elven tomb has completed and you all exit from the elven tomb back towards the land of ten towns two for towns reason, or two towns I tried to put uh, Tanika into a fight for some reason who she was going to fight I have no idea oh and gee I'll... I wonder who it might be I'll take you guys back to the uh, landing page now that we've uh, essentially, I think that was the last adventure before you guys have caught back up to the time skip. Uh, I think so. With a, with a new, <laughs> a new companion, in your uh, companions folder. Sainar. The Elven Mummy. That crazy bitch. All right, ladies, I want a good clean fight. No striking below the waist. 
Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me uh, wet down the area and get it nice and muddy. <laughs> are, are you into making a reference to the Chappelle Show episode when he has the Don King's uh, sissy fights? <laughs> You know I about? don't. I don't think that was where it was going. But since you mentioned it, that's what it actually makes sense. Welcome to Friday Night Sissy Fights. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Ugh. Or if I, I would like to switch out my B team member from Blade Helm to number eleven. Oh, okay. Uh, number 11 has been waiting for this. As he has not uh, been made a, uh, a a member of the B team officially yet. That reminds me, is Star Whisper B team capable or just uh, like a familiar? Well, I, uh, I, I guess it's kind of up to you because they I mean, are. So, uh... yeah, it is my wild companion. So it is a, mm -hmm. a, a class thing. I just didn't know if. I don't, I don't know how we want to treat it. Well, so you know, Star Whisper is your wild companion, but there is someone who is looking to join someone's B team slot. They are a free to agent right now. Oh, that was gonna be a question. Do we? Is it only one per person? I can't remember. It's two. So uh, you want to uh, oh, yeah, eleven as your B team power? All right. Well, then I will make that B team power because I haven't made it for them yet. <laughs> Yeah, everybody gets two. Uh, Akia has Copper and number 11. Uh, Lotus has Watto and Raylan? Or, that is correct. Uh, Gaiman has Dale and... Avalis has the bush, I think. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I got red. <laughs> I like how you're like, Gaiman has the bush, and moving on. Well, hold on, hold on, Gaiman, you know, apologize to red. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, they, they could potentially be a free agent. So I think, I think the three of y'all only have one slot filled? Question yeah, I, I just have Danica. I mean, you want to, to take this, the other priestess. And keep I mean, to keep this cat fight going, I would take yeah. the other priestess unless anyone else wants them. No, Avalis uh, doesn't think it would be wise to take a. a, a he hot he even looks at you. He's like, absolutely, absolutely, fucking lately, no. no. I mean, I'm obviously keeping Watto, and mechanics-wise, having uh, Raylan's hex has been working out pretty well for me. Yeah, red. I mean, I hate to say red's a filler, but red's definitely a filler. <laughs> I just haven't found anything I want to put in its place yet. Yeah, and you can you can still get another B team member without switching yeah. red out too. I'm just a little bush. I'm just here. I mean, nothing against no blueberry, but. <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess if no one wants Shinar, I'll take them. All right, and they'll They're fill up my two slots. Power is Moonlight Gaze. Once per uh, long rest, you can have Sanar target a creature that you can see within 30 feet. If the creature can also see you, it must attempt a wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed for one minute. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Yes. What she's doing to paralyze them? Well, it's her gaze. As she stares at them with her nostrils flaring. The Kill Bill stare with the, you know, with, with the Kill Bill <laughs> siren going off. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's exactly it. Why did everything turn red? <laughs> for such a long time, I couldn't figure out how to find that. I was trying to search for it on on YouTube. I was just like, uh, Quentin Tarantino noise? Couldn't find it. Kill Bill Siren. 
Mm -hmm. Now we know. Everybody's long strider will have worn off. Yeah, uh, I mean, catching up here, uh, after the time skip, I believe you all are, were wanting to go after this missing magic fish hook. <laughs> it sounds so silly to say that. This magical fish hook. Do we have an idea of where it is? Or uh, yes, you were given almost uh, exact coordinates for it uh, based on the accounts of the quest giver uh, and who it belonged to before, and uh, the hunters that had tried to track them down, unfortunately enough, uh, got their asses kicked, killed, and potentially eaten by the inhabitants of the cackling chasm, the place they were last seen going to. Um, why, why are you trying to make that happen? Yeah. Why are you trying to ship us? <laughs> I mean, you know, just put it out there in the universe. And uh, uh, hey, hey, everybody, uh, real quick. So my wife just got home, and I really haven't seen her all day. So uh, what we're going to do, because next session we've got a lot of B-team people we're switching over to, and we are um, going to have new adventures about to get started. Let's go ahead and end our session right there with everything that has just happened, and we will get back after it next week on the 29th. Because it feels like we're in a kind of a transitive period right now. Oh, that's um. If I can, I will not be here. Uh, that's my birthday, so uh, it's. Oh my gosh! Back. Happy um, birthday! Thank you. Yeah, Forty-five because I'm old. Um, mm. but uh, don't repeat that. You're cut, not cut that it, old. We'll, we'll cut it off the stream. Um, <laughs> but You're not uh, sixty or something. <laughs> not yet. Forty-five is <laughs> a new thirty-five. Yeah, let's hope. Um, but yeah, it is day night. Jesus, so, I'm thirty-six. Um, the good news is, of course, with Avos being so weirded out, he's going with the flow. So that's all good. Absolutely. So we'll plan that I will have all these new B team uh, abilities built and put onto your guys' sheet. Uh, and we will be heading for the Cackling Chasm for you guys to deal with the inhabitants of it to find this magic fish hook and deal with the aftermath of this magic mirror well i hope you guys all have a great weekend and a great rest of your week and i will see you next week for our next adventure into rhyme of the frost maiden now that we have caught up to the current time frame bye guys thanks caleb thanks for running thanks for the game. Right, good game good night and uh thanks everyone for tuning in catch you next time